Thank you for joining our Deep Brain Stimulation Educational Series. This series will provide important information that we hope will answer many of the questions you may have about deep brain stimulation, which we will also refer to as DBS during the presentation. The information in this four-part series will be reviewed with you further during your preoperative appointments. We encourage you to write down any questions you may have as you watch this series and bring them to your appointments. During your appointments, we will answer your questions, review your surgery expectations, and address any concerns you have. This is the third of four video presentations in our series. Proper home care is critical after surgery. There are common symptoms often seen at home after surgery and possible serious complications that can occur. In this video, we will walk through the steps necessary for successful aftercare beginning with your medication schedule and a discussion of incision site wounds and how to care for them. It is important that you and your family know how to monitor for common symptoms and serious complications, such as infection, stroke, or seizures, and what to do if they occur. The presentation will end by discussing the level of activity you may have at home and how to maintain the best healing environment as you recover from surgery. Medications after surgery. Deep brain stimulation therapy will not be turned on until two to four weeks after surgery. Make sure to continue to take the same medications as you did before surgery and do not change the schedule unless you are given other instructions by your medical providers. When you are discharged from the hospital, you will be given medication for pain if needed. Caring for surgical wounds. There will be three surgical incision sites to look out for. The first surgical wound is on your head where the DBS lead was inserted. The second is on the side of your head at the connector wire site. The third incision site is on your chest where the battery is inserted. If you have bandages covering these wounds when you leave the hospital, you will be given specific instructions on when they can be removed. You may also find small wounds on both your forehead and a couple of areas on the back of your head. These are the areas where the head frame was secured to your skull during surgery. These are small wounds and should heal almost immediately. They should not need much care after surgery, but you may experience some tenderness and swelling in those areas which is to be expected. When the bandages are removed from your head, you will find sutures or stitches over the incision sites. Occasionally there may be staples. The sutures on your head will be removed at your local Kaiser Permanente clinic approximately three weeks after surgery. You will likely have Steri-Strip tape on your chest wall. They keep the incision closed, so please do not try to remove them. Steri-Strips will fall off on their own. Under the Steri-Strips, special sutures are placed beneath the skin, which will be absorbed over time. You may ask, how do I stay clean if I need to keep the wounds dry? Showering after surgery is not a problem as long as you do not get the incision sites wet. We recommend using a handheld shower head which will allow you to wash below the wounds on your head and chest. Another option is a sponge bath. You may gently clean around the incision site as long as you keep away from the incision and keep it dry. Avoid long steamy showers, tub baths, and hot tubs. Do not touch the incision sites as this can promote bacteria in the wounds. If going outdoors, cover your head with a scarf or hat that is clean and can be washed. The most important thing to remember is to keep the wound sites clean and dry. Common Symptoms After Surgery after surgery, it is very common to have swelling and sometimes bruising on the face, especially around the eyes and cheeks. There will be some tenderness at the incision sites. Do not be alarmed. The swelling and tenderness should resolve within two weeks after surgery. It is not uncommon to have some mild confusion after surgery. 
This is usually temporary, lasting from a few hours to a few weeks, and should improve over time. You may also have a mild headache, feel dizzy, or have some nausea. These symptoms will resolve themselves within a few days. If you have any questions or concerns about your symptoms, you or your family can call the neurosurgery clinic. Often after surgery, your Parkinson's or tremor symptoms may temporarily improve. This is called a microlesioning effect and may last a few days to several weeks. This effect results from swelling around the implanted stimulator wire and stimulation that occurred during surgery. Although microlesioning effects may generally improve symptoms, you may experience worsening of some symptoms after DBS surgery. As your brain heals from surgery, your symptoms will likely return to how they were before the procedure. Do not feel discouraged. This is normal. Your deep brain stimulator has not yet been activated. Possible complications after surgery. Although some confusion or mild changes in mood and behavior may occur after DBS surgery, it's important to look for symptoms which could indicate more serious complications. If there is an increase in confusion or a sudden or severe change in behavior, including depressed thoughts or thoughts of suicide, please call 911 or go to emergency. It is best to be overcautious right after surgery. Other changes that may be seen after surgery include impulsive behavior or becoming overly excited. You may also develop apathy, which is a loss of interest and emotional concern in your daily activity. In addition, you may experience hallucinations, which is seeing things that are not there. Report any of these changes to your movement disorders neurologist during regular clinic hours or go to the emergency room after clinic hours. It's important that you are monitored by your caregiver or family for signs of infection after surgery. This includes fever over 100 degrees, chills, increased tenderness, redness, swelling, or pain at the incision sites, and any drainage or oozing such as blood or pus from the wounds. A serious infection may mean that some or all of the deep brain stimulator components must be removed. However, early detection and treatment can sometimes prevent this from happening. Report these or any unexpected changes in your health to the neurosurgery clinic during regular clinic hours or go to the emergency room after hours. A stroke is a serious complication that can occur during or after DBS surgery and is usually caused by bleeding in the brain. Stroke symptoms can include weakness on one side of the body or face, a sudden severe headache, nausea and vomiting, worsening balance, or sudden changes in vision and speech. Although the risk of a stroke after DBS surgery is 1 to 2%, any stroke symptoms should be evaluated and treated immediately. If these symptoms occur, call 911. A seizure is caused by an irritation of the brain that can happen with implanting the DBS lead, bleeding, or an infection. Seizures after DBS surgery are rare and generally happen within the first 48 hours. Symptoms may include uncontrolled jerking of the face, arms and legs, stiffness of the arms or legs on one or both sides of the body, and loss of consciousness. A seizure can also cause sudden confusion. If you think you may have had a seizure or your family observes a seizure, call 911 or seek emergency medical care. Activity Limitations After DBS Surgery no matter how good you feel after DBS surgery, it's important to limit your activities to give your brain time to heal. More importantly, we ask that you do not do things that will increase the pressure in your skull, such as stooping, straining, and squatting for 12 weeks. Other activities to avoid include lifting items over 5 pounds, running, or other strenuous exercise. Do not drive after surgery until your neurosurgeon or neurologist has given you clearance to do so. 
avoid traveling to areas more than an hour away from home until four to six weeks after surgery. If you must travel for over one hour to follow up appointments, periodically stop the car to get out and walk around a bit. This will help prevent blood clots forming in your legs. You can also do foot exercises while you are sitting in the vehicle, including moving your foot in a figure eight pattern or in the shape of letters of the alphabet. If you are still employed, plan to take four to six weeks off work after DBS surgery. Regardless of whether you're employed or actively retired, it is important that you take a break from activities such as gardening, exercise classes, or child care for at least four to six weeks after surgery. It is also recommended that you wait three to four weeks after DBS surgery to resume sexual intercourse. Summary and next steps. Thank you for viewing our video on deep brain stimulation patient care after DBS surgery. During this video, we provided you with important information about your care at home after DBS surgery. We discussed managing your medications during the first few weeks after surgery. Caring for your surgical incision sites, including when to shower, when the sutures will be removed, and monitoring for any signs of infection were also reviewed. Although the risk of serious complications are low, we addressed complications such as infection, stroke, and seizures, how to recognize them, and what to do if you see these symptoms. Other symptoms after DBS surgery, such as confusion, mood changes, and possible changes in behavior after surgery, were also reviewed. Finally, we discussed activity limitations during the first 12 weeks after surgery. As we conclude, let's preview what we have coming in our DBS educational series. The fourth and final video in the series will review the actual programming of your neural stimulator after DBS surgery and provide care information once a DBS device has been implanted. We hope you found this information helpful. The information in this video will be reviewed with you again during your preoperative appointments. Any questions or concerns that you have will also be addressed at that time. Please enjoy the final video in our Deep Brain Stimulation Educational Series.